So in today's lecture we shall cover pharmacokinetics and we will also have a look at the drug absorption, distribution, metabolism and excretion. So let's get started. What is pharmacokinetics? Pharmacokinetics or PK is the science of kinetics of a drug or the movement of drugs into, through and out of the body and describes the absorption distribution, metabolism and excretion or add me patterns of a drug. Now these four terms add me were first presented together in English by Nelson in 1961. The add me has become a standard term which is widely used in literature, in teaching, in drug regulation and in clinical practice. Now basically, pharmacokinetics or PK is the mathematical characterization or mathematical modeling of a drug's add me. Or pharmacokinetic modeling is basically a modeling technique or an assumption technique which predicts the absorption, distribution, metabolism and excretion of drugs in humans or animal species. Now clinical pharmacokinetics is the knowledge of fate of a drug in the body. We often come across another term, drug disposition, which is a general term and it refers to the post-absorption events of a drug. Now the post-absorption events of a drug include distribution, metabolism and excretion. And as you know, metabolism and excretion represent the elimination phase of a drug. So let's explain these add me patterns a little further. Now add me describes the drug entering the body, moving about the body, changing within the body and leaving the body. Or we may take the analogy of a man who enters his house, moves about his house, changes within the house and finally leaves the house. Now drug absorption involves the movement of a drug from its site of delivery to the bloodstream. Drug distribution involves the movement of a drug from the central compartment which is blood to various tissues of the body we call it tissue compartment and it is a reversible process. Drug metabolism or biotransformation involves the chemical alteration of a drug and as you know it mostly takes place in the liver and promotes its excretion by making the drug more water soluble or more polar or in other words Drug metabolism reduces the lipid solubility of a drug and makes it ready for the excretion. Drug excretion is the removal of the drug from the body either as a metabolite or unchanged drug mainly via kidney. Now collectively metabolism and excretion can be called elimination or they represent the elimination phase of a drug because both these processes promote the irreversible removal of drug or its metabolites from the body. So the drug absorption involves the movement of a drug from the site of delivery to the blood. If a drug is taken orally some part of the drug is metabolized in the GIT or the intestinal walls for example before it is absorbed into the blood. After the drug has been absorbed into the blood it is transported to the liver via portal vein i.e. hepatic portal vein. At this stage the drug is not yet appeared in the systemic circulation. The liver is the main site of drug metabolism or biotransformation and conversion into the metabolites. 
Uh, what is first pass effect? For an orally administered drug, it has to pass through the liver first before it appears in the systemic circulation. Now I'll draw the systemic circulation part here later on. The first pass metabolism is also known as pre-systemic metabolism because some part of the drug gets metabolized in the liver before it appears in the systemic circulation. Importantly, first pass effect is a phenomenon that is associated with the orally administered drugs only. And thus the drugs can suffer extensive biotransformation sometimes to such an extent that bioavailability of the drug is drastically reduced. Now there are four main metabolic processes that take place within the liver. Oxidation, reduction, hydrolysis and conjugation. Now let's see what is hepatic extraction ratio. The hepatic extraction ratio is the fraction of a dose that is removed during the first passage through the liver and does not reach the systemic circulation. Now we'll draw the systemic circulation bit here. Now before drawing the systemic circulation part of the sketch, let's see what is a prodrug. Bear in mind that metabolism can make a drug either inactive or sometimes more active. Yes, it sounds interesting. And this brings in the concept of pro-drug as well. Now a pro-drug is biologically inactive compound or a drug that is metabolized into a pharmacologically active substance in the body. For example, in humans, approximately 10 percent of the administered codeine is demethylated to form morphine and this takes place in the liver. Now morphine is a more potent analgesic than codeine. We'll discuss this concept in more detail in the next slide. Now let's see what happens to the drug when it gets through the liver. Now from the liver the drug is delivered reversibly to the systemic circulation from where it is distributed to the target site or the destination of the tissues and this is the non-metabolized fraction of the drug which is able to get distributed which can eventually lead to the reversible loss of drug from the blood to the tissues and it is defined as the drug distribution now the drug can redistribute back into the blood as you can see it is a reversible process and from here to the eliminating organs which is the liver and the kidney. Now this will result in decrease in blood or plasma drug concentration. Now elimination includes both biotransformation or drug metabolism and excretion. Drug metabolism or biotransformation prepares the drug for excretion via kidneys by making the drug more polar or water soluble and eventually the drug gets excreted from the body via kidneys. Now let's see what happens when a drug is given by intravascular route or IV injection. Now in this case the drug is delivered directly into the bloodstream or we can say that it will avoid the first pass effect seen with an orally administered drug and thus it may take a lower dose to achieve the intended effect. Drugs administered by this route will be 100% absorbed by definition of absorption or we can call it 100% bioavailability because the entire dose is placed into the systemic circulation. So let's explain the concept of pro-drug a little further. As you know that a pro-drug is a biologically inactive compound which can be metabolized in the body to produce an active drug. 
Now codeine is basically a cough suppressant or anti-tussive agent. However, at higher doses, it gets converted to morphine via a demethylation reaction mediated in the liver cytochrome P450 enzyme system. As you can see, codeine, which is a cough suppressant, is metabolized into morphine, which is a potent analgesic compound. Now, how this happens? So this methyl group attached to this O is demethylated and converted into a hydroxyl group. So O demethylation of codeine give rise to morphine in the liver and this results in the conversion of a cough suppressant agent to an analgesic compound. Now this must be known that some drugs naturally happen to be pro-drugs. Whereas some pro-drugs are designed deliberately to improve the bioavailability. If, for example, the drug itself is poorly absorbed from the GIT. Pro-drugs are sometimes designed to reduce the toxicity of the parent drug or to target a drug to some specific tissues of the body. So finally, pharmacokinetics is what body does to a drug in terms of its add me. Whereas pharmacodynamics is what drug does to the body in terms of its concentration at the target site, its affinity to the target, and a drug's molecular, physiological or pharmacological actions.